This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of The Pit Stop, where we are here to find out what's going on in the wonderful world of sim racing this week. And we have news from across the board in terms of every sim has something going on. We are always looking for what's going on. Game updates, eSport racing, uh, hardware updates, hardware changes, new hardware new games, anything we can find in the world of sim racing that might pique your interest or things that you need to know that you might have missed. And that is the whole point of the Pit Stop. I want to thank you all for being here uh, this week and uh, let's talk about what's going on in sim racing. We've been doing our best to trim the fat on this show and get it down to just that condensed version of what you need to know. Starting off with iRacing, Sebastian Job scored his second Porsche Tag Heuer Esports Super Cup win of 2021 at Silverstone. Uh, he has been extremely dominant in the Porsche, which is, you know, a GT car. Uh, rumor has it, next season, the top, top road racers in the world are going to be moved over to that new futuristic Dallara. And it, it'll be interesting to see if the same guys stay at the top or you can have a little bit of a change in talent switching from GT to open wheel. But right now, you know, you look at guys like Josh Rogers, uh, Mac Beckham, Graham Carroll, uh, Sebastian Job, obviously, and these guys have all been real, real strong. So anyway, looking at the results uh, from this last race, uh, Sebastian Job winning the race, Josh Rogers finishing second, Mac Backham third, Graham Carroll and Charlie Collins are your top five, with Mitchell DeJong taking six, Boodaloo, Polsman, looking some other names I know, some names of people, uh, Oscar on there anyway so uh with that through four rounds josh rogers leads in the points with 265 points over mitchell de jong look at that mr rally finishing says standing in second in the best of the best road racers in the world 227 points sebastian job 183 sitting in third place uh looking over to the oval side of things it was michael conti that kicked off this year's e nascar coca-cola i racing series with a win at Daytona. Uh, you know, I, I usually try to keep this really focused on sim racing, but, you know, this is one of those weeks where I was getting messages and phone calls from friends and everybody's so pumped up. Last night was the Twin 125s. I was working, so I didn't get to watch it. But uh, racing season is upon us here in North America. I know Europe sl starts a little later, but, you know, we've already had the 24 hours of Daytona. Now we have the Daytona 500 coming up. And it is on! It is on! And this is when things really start getting heated up in sim racing, too. I think uh, the beginning of real-life racing season always seems to bring uh, guys who maybe been on the sidelines for a while come back to some race, sim racing. Uh, people who never given it a shot. Uh, you know, they, they get that smell, so to speak, of the fuel and tires, watch the race on TV, and think, hey, I want to do that, too. And then they stumble upon our ranks, and, you know, maybe they'll be watching next week's show. Here. Oh, look, big wreck in that one as well. So congratulations to Michael Conti. Michael Guest finishing in second. Jake Matheson finishing in third. Zelensky back in sixth. Uh, DeJong finished in 11. Look at Mitchell DeJong. That kid. He's not a kid. Sorry, Mitchell. Um, I do know Mitchell. Uh, he is having a heck of a sim racing career, I tell you that. So anyway, those are the points in the standings as well because we're only one race into the series or the season this point also uh, a couple days ago back on the 10th this was posted by iRacing so it looks like they're doing some updates to their late model that's the late model isn't it late model cars getting some updates I don't think that's a new car I think that's an update to an existing car uh, let's see yesterday was uh, the last chance for you Canadians to get in the Porsche eSport Canada and I think that's it yep that's it oh here's a little shot of the duels the duality of Daytona, not the duels. Triumph for Michael Conti and heartbreak for Logan Clampett in the final corner. Let's check out the way this finished out. didn't look very real <laughs> that car I, warp speed flipped over the crowd way to go michael i have met michael you know i gotta tell you i am such a lucky guy when i do this and i talk about this and i, I just think uh, you know i've met 
a good amount of the people. When we get into the esport level of, of things, you know, and I start naming guys, it's like, well, you know, I have actually met and hung out with and raced Mitchell DeJong. I have met Graham Carroll. Um, I have met Michael Conti. Uh, these are guys that I actually have met in real life in many cases, so, uh, or interviewed. I, uh, okay, wait, wait, I take it back. I have never met Michael face-to-face -face in real life, but I've interviewed him on the show. I have met Graham Carroll face-to-face, -face, <laughs> and I have met Mitchell DeJong face-to-face. Oh, uh, what else? Assetto Corsa. So, I put a video out a couple of days ago, and I'm gonna come back to channel lineup. But uh, right now, I, this is on our main channel, The Sim Pit. But here is a video, and this is a great day. This is the ACC Streamer Community Race. And so in this race, a couple of races that actually went on, um, you, you got Eris Drives, Jardier, Mr. Grit, Mr. The Sim Grid, Nils Najux, Jack Noller, Doki Abgaferin, sorry, sorry, Dookie, uh, Heike360, RCI, Dan Suzuki, The Sim Pit, Roman Monty. Uh, you had the developers in the race. You had uh, other media people in the race. It was really cool. A lot of fun. I was seriously outclassed. You had a bunch of aliens. You, you talk about guys like Yaroslav Hanzik was in the race. I have nothing for a guy like that, especially in a Seto Corsa. Anyway, here's a video of me driving the British GT pack. And we did a race, uh, two different races. I tried out the GT4 version and the GT3 version, and we did races, uh, two different races. What we did, Donington and Olton Park, right? Those are the two races. Uh, yeah, Olton Park and Donington. So anyway, here is their post and a bunch of other posts talking about the British uh, Grand Prix, or GT pack, I should say, which is now available, British GT pack. DLC now out on Steam, that was as of yesterday. I think it actually came out on the 10th, or they're trying to. I think they ran into a little problem at the end getting it launched, but it is now available. Uh, it's got, so the new DLC, not only does it have the GT car pack, but it's got Snedderton, and Donington, and Olton Park. 40 new liveries, 70 new drivers. Dedicated championships specific to that region. So, uh, cool stuff, and I had a lot of fun doing that, and I'm sure you'll see a lot of other videos uh, about that coming out in the next uh, few days, if you haven't already. And again, at this channel right here, you'll find two different videos. I did a stream for each race. You can also see my streaming quality. Uh, we've moved my live streaming back to YouTube, and it has allowed us to get back to streaming at 1080, 60 frames per second uh, at a 6,000 bit rate. And you can see a very smooth, very clean stream. Um, and yeah, good stuff, good stuff. You should check that out. R Factor, you know, their blogs were monthly before it was the competition system. But now that the competition system has been installed and being updated, and, and honestly quite a game changer for the sim racing industry across the board, uh, we've always talked about iRacing being untouchable. Their competition system is a big part. We've seen just about every other sim incorporate some basic level competition systems, whether you call it a safety rating or a competition rating, they, they, but they've all been very simplified by comparison to iRacing. Now, with that said, uh, R-Factor 2 is really going out of their way to create a competition system that, that really takes that sim into the modern era. Uh, there are a few things they could do to really get there. Uh, this is definitely one of them. So we have another Q&A. This time Spyro, it looks like, is the one asking the questions. And our Gillum Rego. It looks like some community questions being answered as well. Um, so if you want to just find out how things are progressing on that, uh, as I mentioned every show, I have the link to all of the topics that we're talking about. The link to these are all in the description of the show here on YouTube. So whether you're watching a show live or whether you're watching it uh, after the fact, those links are there. So if you want to check out and read every Q&A part of week six of the R Factor 2 competition system Q&A, it's all there for you. Um, also at R-Factor, they're talking about a new build release that came out a couple of days ago. And in this new build, there was an update, PBR update of Indie is ready to download as well. So apparently there was an update and some specifics to that update that all went along in that. Uh, what else? Uh, George Russell and Alex Albon lead the lineup for the final virtual Grand Prix event. This is the $100,000 charity event that they've been talking about. This Sunday's race is Interlagos. 
at the virtual Sao Paulo Grand Prix. Uh, you're going to have a bunch of uh, eSport drivers, eSport stars, we could say. We're going to have a lot of uh, real-life pros, like we said, uh, Albon and Russell. And they are going to run this event for chatter charity. This is Sunday the 14th at 1800 GMT. Uh, various different streaming platforms will be used, and you can see all that in the description there. Again, link to this is in the show. Uh, we don't talk about Dirt Dirt Rally all that much. Uh, I think big reason is Dirt 5 maybe wasn't necessarily made for our audience per se. I'm not going to say it was a good or bad game. I'm just saying it wasn't necessarily made for our audience. Anyway, uh, the Dirt Rally 2.0 World Series Grand Finale takes place on February 27th. Thrustmaster has become an official series partner on that one. So that'll be going on towards the end of the month here, and it's going to be broadcast with Andrew Cawley and John Armstrong doing the commentary. So mark that date in your calendar, and then we just have some other, nothing really news related from them. Uh, Formula One, I don't, again, I try to keep things sim racing, but I do have a few real life uh, Formula One heroes, uh, guys like Fernando Alonso. I, you know, I love Alonso because the guy has really been one of the best guys, especially in the Formula One world. One of the best. I mean, not to take away anything from Max Verstappen or Lando, but uh, Fernando has been definitely one of the people uh, creating an eSport team, being heavily involved. Anyway, unfortunately, Alpine F1 team can confirm that Fernando Alonso has been involved in a road accident while cycling in Switzerland. Fernando is conscious, which implies that it was maybe quite an injury, by the way, just the fact that they're acknowledging that he's conscious, and well in himself and is awaiting further medical examinations tomorrow morning. This was yesterday, so we wait for new news. Uh, sounds like he's going to be fine, but sounds like maybe he even took a hit to the noggin. So get well fast, F.A. Fernando Alonso, get well quick. Um, so NASCAR heat, I'm just, I, so I don't even know this much about this guy. So I'm kind of asking you guys the question, maybe in chat, somebody can give us the answer so everybody else can know. So NASCAR heat is sponsoring the 78 Mustang in, uh, the Daytona 500. So here is their paint scheme. They want to know. And then there's just like, because their name is on a car, there is just all sorts of stuff. So Matt Tift, uh, I believe is the driver name. Matt Tift, team owner of Team Live Fast, Cleveland sports fan, brain, brain, brain tumor survivor, actor, watch our web series every Tuesday. I don't know Matt Tift. I'm assuming if you're a NASCAR fan, you are, you do. But here's a little burnout by their car. This will be in Sunday's race. Here it is. Hands up. Who's hyped for the Daytona 500? And that's all. I, there it is coming off the hauler. Here's the hauler coming into Daytona. There it is in its pit garage. There it is backing up for practice. Yep, rolling out for first practice. That just looked like one of those shots. And here is the driver, BJ McLeod, um, team owner of Team BJ McLeod. Teams, Team Lent Fast. So I'm a little confused. Again, I'm not the biggest NASCAR follower in the world. I watch some races. Here, what's he got to say? This is B.J. McLeod. Okay, and then there's the car. All right, so good, good luck to him. Hey, represent. Represent sim racing and advertise sim racing in the Daytona 500. I'm all for it. You know it. Uh, so this is uh, really for the younger drivers out there only because if you're an old dog, they don't want you. Uh, the FIA Rally Star DLC is now available for WRC The Game, bringing you the brand new MSM Sport Limited Fiesta Rally 3 and an exclusive stage for the Rally at Home challenges, which I believe everybody can do this. Everyone can get the DLC. Everyone can do the challenges. However, to become the next uh, WRC superstar, it, you're going to have to be within their age, age bracket. But the FIA, NACON, and the... Studio KT Racing are pleased to announce that the new Rally Star DLC for WRC, the official game of the WRC game, is now available. 
And here's details on the whole Rally Star program. Start your career now and become part of the Rally, World Rally Championship with the FIA Rally Star program. I just remember, I think it's, is it 24 years old? I know we looked at it before and it was like, oh, I guess that won't be me and my friends. Ah, uh, I can't remember. But it was a, a younger, it was like maybe under 29 or under 24. Ritza Studios, Automobilista 2, version 1.1.1.1 is now live. This is a hot fix to complement our latest release, which we talked about, I think, last week, with some further improvement and corrections. Full change log right here. So there you go on that one. And where am I? Here we are. Uh, here are the hot note fixes at Steam. So this is actually, considering this is a fix to a fix, that's a pretty good sizable list. Some general, some UI, some physics and force feedback, AI, audio, track, and vehicle updates in that one. Uh, race room, they got all their weekly racing and stuff to do. I, I mean, I could go on all day about all the great racing they have going on at race room. However, today I'm here just to tell you they have a happy Chinese New Year. What, a year of the ox, I think it is? Uh, anyway, right now they have a 30% discount on all cars and tracks, 50% discount on a selection of Asian tracks in honor of the Chinese New Year. So anyway, if you're looking to pick up some race room content or get into it for the first time, you can do it on the cheap. <laughs> Wreckfest came out with another set of DLC. This one called Wrecknado. Good time for me to just hit play and drink a little coffee. Look at that track. Yes. Yes. Look at this. <clears throat> you gotta love Wreckfest. I, I mean, what can you say? They just do a fantastic job. <laughs> Ice cream truck. Blade. <laughs> yeah. Free new tracks, unique rewards and challenges, new challenges, new DLC, reckless car pack highlights. Uh, we're thrilled to talk about it. And uh, wow, did I really read the word free? Yeah. New free racing and derby tracks, Rec NATO. Uh, free new free tournament reward bundles as well. So awesome! Thank you, Wreckfest. Thank you guys. Uh, Thrustmaster. All right. Wow, this is kind of a big deal. Is it gonna play? This is this was giving me difficulty all morning trying to get this to replay. It was my thumbnail of the day, by the way. Check this out. Can we go full screen? April 20th, 4.20. Um, so do you realize what we just saw? I mean, you could say that Thrustmaster's been kind of living in the dark ages for a little while when compared to like Fnatic who's really been really pushing and accelerating their entire lineup across the board. Well, great to see what looks like what, I mean, it's all blacked out. It's hard to tell, but it looks like the first piece of like absolutely real substantial hardware out of Thrustmaster. I mean, I see a screen. I see some fancy looking buttons. I see some carbon fiber LEDs. I mean, oh, oh, Tim, in the words of Alan, Tim Allen, oh, oh, right? I mean, that's all good, 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 good stuff. So, all right. Uh, Rick Motech, I don't have anything to show you from Rick Motech other than this awesome rig here, their APX 3000. But the reason I'm doing it is with me going to a weekly format for the show, it makes it hard to remind you guys of Hot Lap Hump Day. Hot Lap Hump Day occurs on the third Wednesday, the third hump day of every month. And that is our big uh, time trial into a race. We've changed the format. It's gotten very, very fun. I'll be there. Uh, Robbie Unser will be there. Uh, Kevin Ford of Extreme Motorsport will be there. A lot of our Sim Pit crew guys will be out there racing as well. Should be a lot of fun. Welcome to everybody. That's going to be Wednesday. Just tune in right here at the Sim Pit. 
uh, Wednesday at 3 o'clock my time, and I'll be giving out the password. Everyone can join us. So that's this coming Wednesday. Uh, Lunar New Year Pack for Euro Truck Simulator 2. So they have some truck schemes, paint schemes, uh, in honor of the Lunar New Year. It's going to set you back 2 bucks, so not a big deal, but it looks like 12 beautiful paint schemes is what are included in this uh, honor of the Lunar New Year. Let's see, a couple more things. We're going to bring this show to a close. Uh, I did mention that here on the Sim Pit channel, we had our, our British GT Pack videos. Well, also coming out just a, a couple days ago was this. Oh, GT Omega. You know, these guys have been known for many years now making some, some let's call them mid-range rigs. And they've done a great job of making a name for themselves in our industry uh, this year has been the year of the 80-20 rig. That's what that profile tubing extrusion. You see a handful of different companies at this point. I mean, some would argue that maybe P1 uh, was the first, but there are so many. And I, and I would say they were not the first. I built an extrusion tubing chassis 10 years ago. Uh, but as far as making a mainstream, P1 really came on the market. And, 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 and now you've got a lot of different companies making variations of the profile rig, including GT Omega with the Prime. Uh, I've got one of these from them for review. I got it very early on. It was just hard for me to get it in the rotation here, so it took a while to get it done. But you'll see mine's silver and black, and every other one you've ever seen is all black. This is actually a, a pre-production model. That's how long I've been sitting on it, so I, I, I really should give you a, you all a huge apology for taking so long to get that done and a huge apology to GT Omega as well. Um, that seat there is my seat. I had to go all the way out to my storage and unpack that seat just to do the review among a few other hurdles that kind of slowed me down on that project. So apologies to them. Apologies to you. But that video is now out. You'll find that right here at the Sim Pit on YouTube. And, and a great review. I mean, in my opinion, I, I think it's a good solid review. I'd love your thoughts on it. Just put them on the comments. Let's check out a few rigs, talk about the Sim Pit business, and then bring this show to a close. I just like seeing rigs that give me a smile, give me a laugh, maybe take me back in time. The Erconian posted this one. Yet another, it ain't much, but it's mine post. And it's my solution for the sliding chair. So you can see he's got his chair anchor tied down to the wheel stand with his Fanatic pedals, Fanatic bass, and a Logitech shifter all working it together there. Not bad for uh, whatever it takes rig. And looking kind of on a more refined, nicer rig. We've got this shot here by... Pepe Sim Racing. Pepe Sim Racing showing off his curved triple screen, monitor above, and a very nice looking... That very well could be a P1 chassis. I think that's an all blacked out P1 chassis with the OMP seat. Fine looking rig. He's got an Archer Racing wheel up on the shelf. He's using the Porsche rim on what looks to be a podium base, if I had to guess. Kind of dark in the photo, but that guy's got a nice looking rig right there. Congratulations, Pepe Sim Racing. All right, this isn't a rig, but this just was awesome. I always thought this is the way slot car racing should be done. All right, you run your treadmill to get power to your car, and that's how you race. <laughs> Billy Strange, you out there, I know you used to own a slot car racing facility. Uh, you ever you ever hook up some treadmills and make people work for it? This is posted by Jarkeb when you just want to go fast. And that was definitely good for the chuckle of the day. <laughs> go, 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 go! <laughs> you know, if you were too good a cyclist, you'd actually have to slow down on the corners and you're going to launch your car. All right. I like this just in sentiment mainly. I mean, I, I'm a pretty good fan of this rig. It's a good, inexpensive rig, this next level racing. Uh, but what I loved here was the post, and this was posted by WW Craw. New to the sub, but I had to post the gift my wife got me. Thank you. Thank you, wife. Good for you. What a wonderful wife. Anybody else ever get a sim rig from the wife? I, I, I'm not married, so I didn't, but no one's ever bought me a sim rig before. Pretty cool. Oh, look at this. This is even better. If you look at the back, you can see he's got an old crappy wheel stand. Like that is the, the starter stand of starter stands. Now discarded into the corner. <laughs> Very cool. 
All right, then we've got this. This was posted by APX5LYR. It's not the most elegant setup, but it'll do for his first sim rig. Yes, it will. We've all been there. Like I said, sometimes it's just a matter of some of these photos just take me back to rigs and ways that I've sim raced, friends that I've had who sim raced, you guys. Uh, we've evolved a long way. And this, oh, another good chuckle. This is by Bicycle Sauce. This is what peak performance looks like. And at first you see some red handles and you think, ooh, fancy billet aluminum stuff. Oh no, this is just like duct tape and bolted to a Logitech shifter. He's got that, I believe that's that pretty well-known eBay handbrake, I'll call it. I don't know the real name. If I'm not mistaken, that's what it is. But hey, that's a lot on a wheel stand. I, I'm not going to knock your setup at all. I think you've done a fine job on a minimalistic variation of what would be a very good performance rig. You can see he's put a lot of miles on. You can see the rippling in the leather. This guy drives. This guy drives for sure. All right. That takes me to Sim Pit Business, and then we'll bring this show to a close and wish you all a great weekend. The uh, So this week we missed the Pit Pass. Devin Booth takes care of the Pit Pass with the update of all our series racing across the board. This week didn't happen. He'll double up this coming Tuesday for updates of last week. But tonight we head to NASCAR. Uh, to NASCAR. Tonight we head to Daytona in our ARCA cars in true spirit of the Daytona 500. Mark Michkowski protecting a five-point lead over Nick Boyd as we go into that race. That'll be me streaming. I'll probably go on the air about 5.30 at Simpit Live on YouTube. Simpit Live on YouTube. We'll come back to that topic in just one second, but that'll be tonight about 5.30, maybe a little bit later. Uh, practice starts at 5. The race kicks off at 6, and since I'm not doing loud chat anymore... Uh, I really no point in getting on the air until we're ready to race. So we'll probably, actually, let, let's change all that. We're going to probably go on the air just before 6 o'clock my time uh, for qualifying and then the race. And then, of course, Sunday, we do have the Simpit GTE League. We'll be going to Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. I love racing that track, by the way. Uh, if there's a race worth watching, it's any race at Circuit Villeneuve. Uh, that track just, every time I'm there, it seems that it ends up being a great race. Gonzalo Perón. With a monster 50-point lead over Randall White as we head into that race on Sunday. I find myself in fourth place. I dropped some points last week. Uh, really nowhere near even getting towards. I'm 40 points back at Kevin Burroughs. Those top three are starting to separate themselves from the rest of the group. And then we have some battles for prestige for fourth, fifth, sixth with three races to go. Um, so that'll be Sunday right here on, uh, no, I'm sorry, not right here, at Simpit Live on YouTube. I'll come back to that. But tomorrow morning, oh, look at our new graphic. Can I zoom in on this? What is it? Is it control? Tomorrow morning is three wide. Three wide is our uh, video podcast, I guess you could call it, with me, Amir Assad, and Devin Booth. Uh, I believe last month we talked about the end of 2020 and the impact it had on the year. Uh, there were some depressing things to talk about in that. There were some great things to talk about in that. And uh, for this month's show, for Three Wide tomorrow at 10 a.m., we are going to talk about 2021. Like, how do you prepare? How do you plan? What are your goals for 2021? We have a few other topics we're going to bring up during the, the, the show as well. But tune in tomorrow at 10 a.m. for that right here at The Simpit on YouTube. Also, tomorrow following... Our three wide will be the official Simpit patron race. Uh, last week, we did our patron appreciation practice race where I get to race with the guys. So this was actually put up at that Simpit Live channel where I now do all of my... If I'm on track, for the most part, it's going to be at Simpit Live. Uh, there are times that I will still use the main channel, like when I did that big event with the Assetto Corsa streamers. But for the most part, my racing is going to be at Simpit Live, including last week's race. This is at Oren Park in the Mazdas, which is where tomorrow morning's patron race is going to be. That'll be at 11 o'clock, and I'll be doing the broadcast calling the action of our patron support team out on track. Should be fun, and we will give away this month's 
Simpit patron trophy, patron appreciation trophy during that race. Anyway, that is going to do it for today's show. I think I covered everything that I wanted. Be sure to subscribe to the Simpit here on YouTube to get more shows like this. We are really starting to crank out more reviews, more tip shows, and things like that that you'd always expect from the channel. And of course, subscribe and check out Simpit Live on YouTube as well, where you'll find all my personal racing and the original Simpit Live channel on Twitch. You're going to find Devin Booth really cranking up his efforts there. So we're going to have a lot more racing going on, a lot more reviews, just a few more channels that you got to keep track of. But it should be pretty simple, and it should be all in the name of fun. That's going to do it for this one. I want you to get out there, have yourselves a great weekend. Enjoy Daytona if you're going to be involved or enjoy any racing that's coming back to life. Get out there do some sim racing for yourself. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.